let's see. Yeah, I played it on PC via Epic. And yeah, basically, you know, the story takes place in this very in a, in a world that's somewhat different from our own. And yeah, you you go on a pilgrimage to find out what it is exactly that has happened and what to do. The uh, yeah, there's a really good this is from the the steam storm. This is a direct quote. The gods of old are forgotten, lost in the events that shattered the world, leaving only fragments of islands in the sky. And yeah, that that quote gives you a a sense of the the vibe of this game. So on Steam, some of the the tags I personally felt were the most yeah most give you a sense of what the game is like. Are relaxing, open world. Uh, let's see, walking simulator and casual. Some have added puzzle. I'm not sure I would do oh, right. And indie is also important to to keep in mind. Yeah, um, I'll I'll talk some about the the puzzles. Uh, not immediately, but yeah. And yeah, you play. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go ahead and guess it's pronounced Auk, but there's no voice acting in this, so nobody actually says it out loud in this game. It's only spelt, you know, A E A U K. So that's yeah. And she can, you know, she gains the power at the start of the game to transform into an eagle and let's see the yeah the the camera is quite free you can you know you can turn the camera around and you know the the you control her with WASD and yeah, the the um, at least when you're walking, you can turn the camera and and the the um, you know if the camera's behind her, W is is forward. If it's in front of her, it's it's S that has that function. And yeah, this game is. Let's see, oh, I thought I had the link ready. I'll I'll open it here. Um, there we go, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, th three hours if it's just main story and completionist is four and a half. You know, I've seen some that completed in less than two hours. And the, f let's see, yeah. I have, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about some other stuff before I get more into, yeah, uh, the controls are very straightforward, you know, WASD, tab for map, uh, you know, you can, yeah, E is use, F brings, you know, toggles whether or not you've got the lantern out, you know, and, and when you're, you know, E is also how you transform, if you jump, if if you're outside, if you're not, you know, inside, you can't transform. But yeah, if you're outside, jump and E. You don't even have to like jump off an edge. Just jump E. You'll transform into an eagle, and you can transform. You know, you can transform completely at will. And the let's see, there was one more thing I wanted to say about the controls. Uh, yeah, uh, the space key. If you're flying, it it speeds you up. And then if, but if you're walking, it's just jump. Right, and, and yeah, when you're flying, you know, if you use left mouse key, you know, that can, I actually don't know exactly what it's called, but left mouse key and or right mouse key can help during flight. 
you know, I, I don't know how to explain it, but if you play the game, you'll, you know, you can experiment with it. And let's see. So, yeah, you spend a bunch of the, the game basically exploring, you know, caves and temples and such. And, yeah, solving these very, you know, puzzles so basic, I hesitate to call them puzzles. And the... Yeah, the exploration is also part of it. You know, it's a game that doesn't tell you where to go more than, like, giving you some, like, you know, sometimes when you talk to someone, you'll get some direction, but some of it is very vague. Some th There's one time where it literally just said, there is something important northeast of here. You know, and, and yeah, so I went northeast and, and, you know, was able to proceed. But it does not, you know, when, when it comes to, to where to go, the game really doesn't hold your hand. The, at least not all of the time. You know, it, it doesn't mark on the map where you're supposed to go, for example. And, oh, right, uh, I just realized, yeah, as for length, uh, let's see, it took me, yeah, three and a half hours to complete. And that might be about what I, yeah, so this game features no enemies, uh, you know, there's no, like, the closest it gets to AI is that there are, like, animals and such. And, you know, for some of them, if you go really close, you know, they'll, like, there's these, like, lamb that if you, if you go really, you know, if you come running, at least, there's a, there's a, I didn't unlock it, but there's a, there's an achievement that's you know described as get some lamb baby love so I'm guessing there's something you can do to to be appealing to them but if you just come running a lot of you know they'll bleat and they'll run off in the other direction and that's basically that's the extent of the AI and yeah no inventory arguably fetch quests and I do really appreciate, like, the non-linearity that I've touched upon goes for pretty much everything in the game. Like, there are multiple temples. And in order to get into a temple, you have to get the key. And, you know, once you get into the temple, I don't, I don't know if I want to give away, but I'll just say there's something important to do inside each temple. You don't have to do the temples in any specific order. Like... I realized once I was a chunk into the game that I actually had done them in an unusual order, and the game in no way punished me for this. The you know some games, if you try to go in a you know yeah, if it's linear and you're trying to to go outside of that linearity, you're just not going to be able to proceed, and that's not the case here. Once you get a key, you can get into the temple that that key corresponds to regardless of the order i i realized you know i did it in the most bass backwards way at all possible i i but yeah the game didn't you know prevent me at all and yeah cutscenes tend to be very basic and the let's see yeah, uh, I would not really say the game is challenging, but it is pretty fun, you know, it, yeah, relaxing more than challenging. And the achievements do encourage you to, to go absolutely everywhere and try to, yeah, explore as much as possible. I wouldn't really say it ranks high on replayability. I I would basically say this is some, you know... Like, if in half a year, if I'm feeling really stressed out about something, I might reinstall it and just fly for a little while, but I'm not sure I see myself, like, 
playing through. Like, I will say, it wasn't a game where there was anything that I could point to and say, I really don't want to deal with that ever again, you know. Did not run into any bugs or glitches. And the, the level design is quite good. And I do also appreciate there is some, you know, some openness and non-linearity to the... I'm not sure there was too much to the caves, but the temples themselves. And maybe also... Actually, yeah, maybe the caves that had temple keys, at least. But yeah, you know, there's several things inside that you have to do in order to get all the way through it. And there was a some freedom in the you know the the order in which you approach these different things. And also something I really appreciate, something honestly I feel like more recent games have done well at this, but you know, if you go back some some years, I guess by this point you have to go back several decades. Some games really did not do this well. As you proceed through these caves and temples, every so often you'll be able to open a shortcut to an area, back to an area that you've already been, so you don't have to just backtrack for forever to get all the way back. You know, it just once you're done in an area, it opens a door, and you can just go through the you know, not always the door. It opens a shortcut, and you can take that both directions. And, yeah, uh, the game has good environmental storytelling. And, yeah, so, puzzle design. In at least one spot, it's literally just, there's a bunch of different things that have to be activated. You just have to activate all of them, you know. You just, like, you look around, you, you recognize visually what you're supposed to activate. You activate it. That's it. You know, there there are some where you're supposed to, like, match patterns. It's, you know, tends to be very easy because you, you know, yeah, you can see what, you know, yeah, not rocket science. You can see how the things go together. I, I will say eventually, you know, later in the game, there were a few... I still hesitate to call them puzzles, uh, t tasks, you know, basically, you know, they're, they're too easy for me to feel like calling them puzzles makes that much sense. Like, the, the, yeah, it's somewhat similar to, to the also fairly recent game, Adios, you know. And, yeah, um... Flight is incredibly freeing. You can take in the beauty of the game world at two different speeds. You can bank, you can turn, you can pitch. And let's see. Yeah, when you're flying, and in fact, in the entire game, there's nothing that can actually hurt you. Let's see. There, there's no health bar, and there's no fail state. And, yeah, there is some platforming, but it's extremely easy, and no matter how badly you screw up, and most, you just have to spend a little bit more time to, you know, th there's no, yeah, you know, some, some platformers, you can save scum, others, you have to rely on checkpoints, you know, I grew up on Commander Keen and the... Uh, you know, the very first 1989 Prince of Persia. So, for me, this felt very, very mild, you know. I will say, in some of the places, if you screw up very badly, you might have to spend, like, three minutes or more getting back to the spot that you, you jumped from. And, and you know, honestly... I, I do absolutely respect. I don't think every game has to be challenging. I respect their choice, and it clearly was a choice. It doesn't feel like they just didn't know how to implement consequences. And, yeah, some of the platforming you can actually avoid just by walking instead of jumping. Let's see, but, but not all. The graphics are very pol polygonal, not an awful lot of detail. And again, I believe it's a stylistic choice. 
and let's see. And uh, let's see. Yeah, um, I've seen some criticize the game, saying they had hoped for more flight, saying you know, too they felt too much of the game is the indoor cave platforming. And yeah, I absolutely understand why that would frustrate. I think, like, the sense I got was that they wanted to make you miss the flight. You know, we gotta remember, some, sometimes video games give us everything we want. Sometimes it's good for a game to give, you know, to hold back a little. Because for sure, like, obviously the platforming itself, you know, if you can just fly, then there's, you know, they'd have to change it to make it a different challenge, you know. Like, loops you have to fly through in a specific way, and, you know, if you miss one, you have to start over or something. But they want to do platforming. They could have had you fly the times where you're not doing platforming and just have some sort of in-universe thing of, like, oh, you know, you can't fly across these gaps because of magic or something. But they didn't want to do that, and I do think, overall, I'd say maybe 10%, I agree that at least some of this I would have liked for you to be able to, to fly. Maybe especially because you literally get flight, I think, five minutes into the game, you know. Like, at the very start, you're told to go into a cave, you go in there, something happens, I don't know, if I want to give away exactly what, and when you leave that cave, you can fly... And for the rest, you know, yeah, from then on, you can fly if you're outside. And yeah, a bunch of the game you spend inside not being able to fly. But yeah, a, ch a chunk of the game you fly between these islands suspended in the sky. No, no water between them, just air between them. And let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, you can use this lantern, and it is explained why, but you can use it to see what ghosts have said once upon a time. You can't interact with them, you just see a brief snapshot of their experience, the ghostly, yeah, this, this ghostly presence that you need to get close to and then, you know, light up with a lantern, can be recognized from relatively far above the islands, like these small glowing white little things, so you know to land and check out what it is. And then there's also, of course, you know, sometimes you'll see something really amazing and you'll want to land and investigate to find out. And you can read big, you know, stone tablets and, and interact a little with other human characters. Not like dialogue tree, it's just yeah, come to think of it, I'm not sure Auk really says much of anything. She's kind of, she's a little bit of a blank slate character, which is fine. That's what they were going for, just you know, letting you know. And, the, um, yeah, you know, basically, you, you can walk up to a character, press use, and they'll, you know, sometimes it's just one line, sometimes it's like five lines, and you just click use until they've exhausted, and then you move on. You know, you don't get to respond to any of it. You know, sometimes it's world building, sometimes it's actual hints as to what you're supposed to do to proceed. And... Yeah, um, flying is really exhilarating, and, you know, yeah, you get to fly through clouds, and just, yeah, it really feels like you're completely surrounded by, just, yeah. And, and, you know, the fact that there's no danger means that you can do it, you know, if you find a cloud, you can fly through it. If you liked flying through it, you can just, you know, turn, an eight, turn, turn 180 degrees, fly through it again, you know. And, let's see, yeah, and the game, it's more vibes than danger, and the music also reflects that. It's very chill and breezy. And, let's see. Right, and I mentioned earlier there's sheep. There's also, you know, at least one part where there's like fish jumping out of water. I did at first think they would stop jumping if you go into the water. This isn't always the case. Certainly, parts of the environment d does respond to your presence. A number of the islands are uninhabited. Some have large mountains, caves, and, you know, the ones where there are currently people living on them actually do feel like they're places that you actually could live. Like, 
at least one of them has a farm with grain, sheep, you know, access to water and such. And let's see. yeah, sometimes you can fly for like a minute before you actually even arrive at, at land, de depending on where you, you know. Sometimes you can't even see the land you're headed towards at first. Maybe it's currently hidden by clouds or just so far away that you haven't perceived it yet. I've seen some criticize that the open world is largely empty. I don't disagree with that. I, th I do think whether or not you consider that to be negative is individual. It makes the world feel vast. And you know, after all, here on Earth, by far the majority of the planet you know, is covered in water, does not support human life the way that the you know the parts that have dirt do you know it felt natural to me that they made this choice i do appreciate that it's it's not for everyone and certainly obviously part of the appeal of an open world game is going to all the different places and you know interacting with things or at the very least witnessing like living parts of the world and yeah the, by by the standards of most you know this is a very empty world you know like I've played you know I think most of the Grand Theft Auto games from the first to the the expansion packs of the fourth and yeah pick one of those at random and there's something interesting everywhere you go in in the world you don't go for very long without encountering something that feels like a yeah a, not just lived in but a currently living vibrant place you know same thing for you know played assassin's creed 1 through assassin's creed 3 which is ironically three games five games but yeah you know that same thing you ev everywhere you go there's something so yeah as an open world game it it is not what we maybe expect from that sort of thing i don't think that it was open world just to broaden the audience i do th think that that was to you know it they they wanted for the world to feel larger even if a lot of it is empty and and maybe also the fact that it does feel a lot of it does feel empty you know, maybe encourages us to, like, really hope we can achieve our goal, that we can fix this, you know, there's, yeah, I don't know, that was what I was, was thinking, I, I, I don't blame anyone who doesn't like that aspect of the game. Others have pointed out the lighting and colors are beautiful, the controls are definitely not amazing, especially on foot. You know, I, I do very much enjoy flight, but walking and jumping, it's just not as fluid and responsive as it should be for a platformer. And let's see. Yeah, when it comes to the puzzles, some say, some reviewers have said the puzzles are, are easy to the point where they wouldn't call it puzzles at all. Kind of agree. Others say they're appropriate in difficulty. Some yeah some have said you know some of them are challenging and you might need a walk through see yeah and I really appreciate the the islands as you're you know flying some you know the the world of the game is so large that some islands it's like summer it's you know bright sunlight and and you know yeah an active farm and such other parts it's winter and there's like snowstorm you know Maybe that's slightly overselling it, but there's snow and, you know, wind. And let's see. Yeah, and, and a lot of the exploration, yeah, you are flying. You know, you may need to fly over an island to the side of it, maybe even under in, in some cases, to find where you need to go. But... I never felt like the only way that I would be able to see where to go is to just walk on the islands, which, considering how fun flight is, it you know that would feel like a letdown. Yeah, the music is very soothing. Flying with a flight stick style joystick, not joypad, can't speak to that, is amazing, warmly recommended. 
if you fly directly into a hard surface, you'll just transform back t into human form. And you know, if you if you jump from really high up, there, you know, yeah, ev you know, eventually you'll land on solid ground, and there'll be this like magic thing that makes clear, you know, yeah, the, you know, some magic was needed to make sure it was a safe landing, but you're not gonna run out or anything, and you are fine now. Or you can also let yourself fall off the, you know, when, yeah, outside where, where you can fly and such, you know, yeah, there is a, yeah, if, if you let yourself fall to the very bottom, since there's nothing down there, the same thing happens as if you just fly past the border. It teleports you back to a nearby island. And and yeah, you don't you don't lose anything, you know. And yeah, this is one of those games where the game does not do itself keep track of very much of the information you've been given, other than the map. You know, the, the player is meant to determine and memorize or note it down on a notepad as you're playing, which I quite appreciate. It's been a while since I played a game that actually encouraged that. You know, there, again, there's so many games where it's like you know. I, I I definitely do think some of the games need it, but sometimes, you know, like you're you're playing the game, it's like, oh wow, they told me this thing. <clears throat> I bet that's going to be important, you know. And then you know, before you even have a chance to to like write it down for yourself, you you know, maybe open objectives menu or something, and it says a character in this location told you this. You know, just yeah, really appreciate that this one, yeah. And, you know, the crucial information it gives you, uh, right, when it comes to crucial information, it gives you a little help in that some of it is highlighted in dialogue boxes, which is where you get a lot of this information. But there isn't any place in the game where you can look up if you missed something. You know, yeah, you have to pay attention, you know. You, you know, yeah, basically you'd have to go to a forum or a walkthrough if you want to know that information. Okay. Actually, yeah, it comes to, I think maybe some of them you can go back and talk to the character again, and they'll say the exact same thing. Of course, it's not exactly difficult to just brute force the game. You know, basically it's going on the honor system that you won't just do that, but actually let yourself be transported. There are, unfortunately, a number of times where it looks like something would enable you to platform across it, like it's not quite so tall that you wouldn't be able to make the jump, is what it looks like, but then you actually try and you find the level designer simply didn't realize some someone would try to jump. Oh, that's right, yeah, that's one glitch I actually did encounter. Sometimes you'll glitch into something. I've never gotten stuck inside anything. You can just easily move back out. And sometimes there's an invisible wall. And it's really too bad when this could so easily have been addressed simply by making these areas just a tiny bit taller so that it would be easy to tell just from looking that you can't make a certain jump. And let's see. Yeah, there's also a part where there's a hole in the wall and you know it looked big enough, but yeah, eventually you know, I just gave up trying to get through it because it evidently I couldn't actually get through it. You know, it's it's really too bad. This is the kind of thing where you should always be able to tell from looking. And this is something the original 1989 Prince of Persia excels at. But other excellent platformers also struggle, including Commander Keen games, Crash Bandicoot Warped, and others. One thing the game does keep track of is what you got of the temple keys and the map. You know, you're at, at the start. The the map is relatively bare, and you know the the finest cartographers in the land would like you to just fill it in as you go. And and yeah, every time you discover a new area, it is permanently added to the map. As soon as it saves your game, you know you're yeah, it's going to be there. And let's see, yeah, so the game explores how over time perception of religion changes, and some start to break tradition kind of implies that moving away from religion can destroy civilization. Not a big fan of that message. And also the eroding effect that industrialism can have on the environment, favoring short-term profit and ignoring the long-term consequences that inevitably follow unregulated capitalism. That message I definitely do approve of. 
And right, so some yeah, some critics have called it intuitive, and I definitely agree. And I also think the tutorial at the very start does quite a good job, you know, telling you how to to play and not giving you an overwhelming amount of information, but also telling you what you really do need to know. Right, some have said that the low poly minimalist graphics mean that the game is going to age well, and yeah, you know, it's seven years old now. Yeah, the yeah, it's it's aged well. Some have argued that the game really needs more collectible or yeah, needs collectibles in addition to the achievements in order for it to be more replayable. And this is definitely something that I think would have been fairly easy to implement and could have increased replayability. I don't know if I would go so far as to say that I thought it was a mistake that it's not there. <clears throat> but I definitely do see, you know... And, and yeah, in, in some ways, this is somewhat like, you know, Dear Esther, if you can move faster, and, you know, Adios, if there was... You know, if it was open world, you know, basically... It's, it's less a video game in the traditional sense with, with like challenging gameplay and you know fail states and such and or, or at least fail states that set you back a lot and and that are difficult to avoid and more you are you know moving through a short story and I definitely do think you know for all three of these games if one of if if any one of them was like a third longer than it is, yeah, I would be saying I I think we need more, you know, more challenge, more depth to the gameplay, that sort of thing. But given the the length and and you know for sure you know get them on sale though I always say that be sure to to not you know I I get being frustrated if you spend just enormous amount of money um, let's see so this was originally like 15 uh, 15 euros on the the steam store and yeah I can appreciate you know yeah, yeah you'll want to get it on sale I I would probably have been disappointed if I spent that much money on it given what it, it gives now one person Right, it's, yeah, one, one person he wished there was more verticality and, and you know, the, oh, the islands tend to be on the same level. There's not that much flying up and down to travel between them. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that. Um, it, it didn't really hurt the experience for me personally. And, and one person said that the game didn't save his progress for several hours. This was not my personal experience at all. Um, you may have to make sure you end your session either entering or leaving a cave or a temple or that sort of thing. But there's a lot of those around. You know, like maybe, yeah, if you, if you realize, okay, I'm going to have to stop playing fairly soon. Yeah, find somewhere to, to go into that. That worked completely consistently for me. There was not a single time in this game where... Yeah, after entering, and and the thing is, you know, the game, you know, puts the, the literally the word saving at the, I want to say the bottom right of your corner of your screen when you enter, or I believe also when you exit, at least if you exit after you accomplish something, you know. I think there's also other parts where it saves, but yeah, the cave slash temple thing you know, one hundred percent certain. Uh, also, yeah, when you know, some some games once you've completed them, if you want to play them again, you just have to start all over. This one, you know, I I tried after completing it, it it still had to continue. It didn't just say new game, so I pressed continue and it just put me right in front of the last area that I entered. So, you know, yeah, if I at some point, you know want to, yeah, go exploring some more. I don't have to rediscover all the areas, for example. Now, the ending. Uh, some people really hate the ending. 
and it definitely is very much a case of if you go into this game with certain expectations for the ending you are going to be disappointed and ultimately I think that the game does enough over the course of it to help adjust those expectations I think we're just hardwired to expect certain things from video games and and again this is less a video game and more you're you know you're walking jumping and flying through a a short story that is mostly world built you know you know those parts when you read a, a book and it's like you know when you when when the protagonist looked around everywhere there was these amazing colors and scents and you know just stuff like that that's that's basically what this is there's not a lot of plot and it's not really a game about failing so the fact that the ending I def I, I'm not going to pretend like I love it. I definitely also would have liked for it to be slightly different from, from what it is. But I do think that it is reasonable. Yeah. The, the game does deliver what... You know, yeah, basically the... the See. Yeah, you know, some some people say that they felt like it was unfinished, and let's see the um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. That's as much as I can really say about the, the ending without spoiling, but it definitely is something. I, if the game had ended 30 seconds before the, the, end, the actual ending had, you know, I would definitely be saying this was not a, you know, a satisfying ending at all. I hesitate to call it a conclusion. I suppose, again, that depends on individual, uh, yeah, but, and I'll, I'll definitely say, I, I, you know, for the first two or three minutes, I was thinking, do I, is the game punishing me because I didn't complete a certain thing, you know, like, if it, it feels like the bad ending, you know, it, it feels like, you, you know, you played Silent Hill and it's like, oh, I was supposed to save that guy, I didn't realize that, you know, but, no, it has... It has just enough. You're, you know, you're you're meant to reflect and think, rather than it giving you that really, you know, because like a lot of video game endings, especially, you know, it, it's it's not quite, it's not a violent game, but it is in part an action game. It has platforming elements, you know. Yeah, you know, there was maybe some slightly unfounded expectation that the ending would be this big like pulse pounding satisfying thing you know something to conquer and that's just not really what you get and and yeah I will 100% admit like there wasn't anything in this game where I felt you know yeah this was maybe mostly on reflection but thinking back I can't claim that there's anything in this game that really made me that that would have reasonably such you know yeah um I I don't think there's anything in the game that really suggests that that's going to be the kind of ending we get and yeah um, I think that might be everything that, um, yeah, um, I mean, I, I will say it's not the kind of thing where, let's see, I mean, there's not, as far as I know, there isn't a, a sequel to this. Just gonna real quick double check. Um, 
Yes, as far as I can tell. No. Oh, right. And yeah, this was published by Daedalic Entertainment. I'm afraid I did. I don't think I've really played any of their other stuff yet. I do own some, so I will be... But, but yeah, I cannot speak to whether or not this is at all like what, you know, one might expect from them. And, yeah, um, I think the, right, yeah, one, one critic also said the, you know, the, uh, let's see, Todd Rigney of Adventure Gamers said that it's a lack, the game's lack of puzzle diversity made the gameplay weak. And that is definitely, I, I do think that, you know, I, I try not to go hard on, on indie projects. This really feels like a, a passion project. This was made by people who really wanted, you know, yeah, they felt they had something to offer the world, and they made exactly that. They didn't try, they, they didn't compromise their vision. And I think that's something we need. You know, there's there's way too many you know, games, movies, TV shows, where it just delivers something that they think will appeal to a mass audience. You know, that's that's very much, I, I'm not sure I would call this mainstream. You know, it, yeah, I, uh, I have almost no experience with the Zelda games, but I've seen some people say, oh, it feels like one of the, I, well, uh, which one? Um, yeah, so the, the, let's see, one, one person said, the game feels like the devs wanted to recreate the flying from Zelda Skyward Sword. You know, I, even with my very, very minimal experience with Zelda, I am well aware those games have puzzles, you know, those are, and, and that's, like, for sure, if you play this expecting something like that, that's just not, you know, those have puzzles, they have combat, you know, there's, they, they offer a lot of things that this game does not. I think those are made by bigger developers, or maybe not the oldest ones, but anyway, yeah, the, the, um, although I guess back when the oldest ones were made, I'm not sure developing teams were that large anyway. Anyway, moving on, yeah. Um, I definitely think it's important to have, you know, your, your expectations need to be the, the, yeah, if, if you, let's see, that's right, yeah, on, on, um, right, hold on for just a second, and there we go. Yeah, on, on Steam, if you go to the, you know, there's not actually another game by, you know, developed by, they're called Forgotten Key. You know, there's, like, there's a, there's a bundle on Steam with, other than this, a game called Unforeseen Incidents and one called Far Loan Sales. And I haven't played either of those, so I can't comment. But yeah, I, I see some resemblance. But they're yeah, they're they're different different developers, different publishers. You know, um, I would like to see you know if, if they make. I, I'm not super interested in a sequel, but a spiritual successor, I would definitely play. Or just yeah, if if Forgotten Key has something else, you know, they're they're yeah, I would I would be very interested to see what else they feel that they have to offer to, to put out in the world. And yeah, um I rate this an eight out of ten and yeah. That, yeah, I'm, I might, 
every so often go back to this and just fly for a little while because that really was just such yeah so so immersive of an experience